Okay, we are back at Mount Morrison. It's over my uh, my left shoulder there. We're gonna go get some vertical today. You better believe it. But before we get started, I want to dive into some back end stats on this YouTube channel because I am trying to listen to you, trying to figure out what you all are interested in watching on this channel. All right, because I'm I want to serve you and I want to continue to provide as much value as possible. All right, so here are the top three videos in the last month on this channel with respect to views. All right, here you go. Number one, the Hoka Carbon Rocket versus the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. That's number one. Number two, how to run faster. Threshold training is key. And number three, how to run faster. Build the aerobic engine first. So what do those stats tell me? It tells me that, listen, we always, we love talking about running shoes here. I know you do. I listen to, I read your comments. I listen to your thoughts on Instagram. And basically running shoes are a big part of this sport. However, number two and number three videos on the channel in the last month are all about how to run faster. That is amazing. And that, te that tells me that, listen, whether you're in high school or whether you're in a master's division, it doesn't matter. We're all continuing to push ourselves to chase down PRs and to, try and to yes, try and run faster. I know that's what I'm definitely trying to do as I get ready for the marathon. So therefore, today, I, I don't think I've ever, I know we've talked about uphill running, mountain running, uh, hill training, but I've never really done a video that's really focused on a little bit of the science behind it, what it does to your body, what it does to your stride, and so that's what we're gonna talk about today. How to run faster and how hill training, mountain running can help you run faster no matter where you live, whether you live in the Rocky Mountains or whether you live in Pancake Flat, Florida, wherever you're at in the world, all right? So, all right, here we go, let's do this. Uphill running, Mount Morrison, light it up. All right, cool. Like I said, I was, I want to do this thing. All right, we picked up Alex, John, and Jason. What's up? Oh, man. So last night on Strava, just put it out there, last minute, I was like, you know what? Enough of this running alone business, right? <laughs> I feel like runners, we uh, we run alone a lot. So we're here at Mount Morrison. Gonna go see if we can get muddy. And <laughs> this really loves company, and, right? And yeah. <laughs> and maybe maybe if you brought some uh, a second pair of socks. Yeah, that's right. Misery loves company. So we're talking real steep. So you just <laughs> just gonna it'll burn. It'll burn. Yeah. This is partially how I film the runs, is this guy right here. Yeah. I felt when it's dry. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hi, right, Jason. Whoa. How did you, uh, do you remember how you found the channel? Yeah, I found the channel, like most gear nerds, looking at shoe reviews. Nice. <laughs> which which shoe do you remember? You know, I don't recall. I feel like I found one and then just started shuffling through all of the different videos. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure I bought a pair of Beacons because of you. Yeah, which? <laughs> And how many them. how many miles have you put in them? You know, I'm approaching 400 miles now. Yeah. Yeah, they're holding up. Yeah, they looked great yeah. in the in the parking lot. I'm actually even considering racing. Oh man. <laughs> well, someone else is here before us. Right. Holy smokes. There we go. Right to the nice track. Work. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Alex for the win. <laughs> Boom. That we should we should have we should have packed ropes. 
there, buddy. At the end? Yeah. Yeah, a little ice. Lunch? Yeah. I think that's longs. I think so. We ran uphill and now we're running downhill. <laughs> Earned it today. Holy smokes. Snow, mud, ice, rock, even a little bit of a creek here on Mount Morrison. Woo. Sideways? Aspect ratio, yeah. Okay. Bye. Moguls. <laughs> Awesome. So tomorrow's vlog is all about uphill running and mountain running. And I almost find this grade harder than that. What? I know it's weird, but like steeper stuff. I don't know if it's my biomechanics or what, but it's like, it wants you to go, like you want to go fast, but it's a, to me, it almost seems harder. It's crazy. It's runnable. Yeah, it's runnable, exactly. When it's steep, you can't see how far you have to go. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's another... I agree or disagree on that one. <laughs> I don't know. Like, my legs, it's weird. <laughs> it's almost like I... Like, jumping over the rocks almost helps. Oh, yeah. The English place. You know, I think I've been there once, and yeah, I thought it was good. You know we're getting to the end of the run when we're starting to talk about food. <laughs> nice work. See you. Boom. Good job, man. Good work. Yeah. John. Woo! Oh. Vert and Miles. We will take it. We will take it. Oh, what a special day on this YouTube channel, meeting up with some of the Demore Global running crew. Thank you again, fellas, for coming out. It was fun. We will do it again. And yes, we ran up mud, uh, snow, even a little miniature creek, it felt like, down the middle of the trail. But we got it done. Look at the look at the Arctic Claw 300s there. That was a, it was a good day to be out in the hills. That is for sure. Okay, and it's a perfect uh, connection to the focus of today's vlog, how to run faster run uphill, run up mountains. And I'm gonna explain the whole benefit package you do. <laughs> Isn't that for, don't they say that in insurance benefit package? I don't know, or maybe health insurance, I don't know. I'm gonna explain to you the whole benefit package to running up hills and how it will help make you faster. All right, quick story, last fall, uh, here in Denver, solo, in a time trial, nobody else around except for people walking their dogs. I did a I did a half marathon time trial. I ran one hour and 11 minutes off of zero, zilch, no speed training, no interval training, no track training, nada, nothing. It was all off of the, it was coming off of the, the tailcoat of, the, of training for the 100 mile race in Steamboat Springs, the Run Rabbit Run 100, where leading up to that race, yeah, I did a decent amount of elevation gain going into that race. And so after the race didn't go so well, the 100 mile race, I said, huh, let's, let's throw our hat in the ring and try a half marathon. And so that's what I did. I did a one hour and 11 minutes, and I don't tell you that to brag. I'm just telling you that to say, if you can combine speed training and, and hill work, what could be the combination? And that is frankly what I'm hoping to get out of this training block right now leading to the Cleveland Marathon. That is why I continue to do hill work and hill work and hill work and elevation gain. And watch out, once I start mixing in that speed work, I'm excited to see what that combination will bring. Okay, so first benefit of uphill running, knee drive. That's right, when you're going up a hill, not in a mountain or you know whatever case it might be or or a treadmill we'll talk about that in a minute you're you have to push yourself forward and up forward and up so in order so that you don't fall on your face because you're tripping on rocks you have to lift up your knee 
just a little higher. And if you look at the elite marathon runners, men and women, their knee drive is a pretty special thing to watch. Their, their, their gait cycle, so their entire stride is so, usually it's very fluid, but they also have a very solid knee drive especially the shorter distances but even the, the best of the best watch them in the marathon if you can get some youtube clips of them in slow motion their knee drive is amazing so running up a hill or a mountain you have to lift up your knee a little higher to get over the rocks over the roots over the logs whatever you're going up um and it you don't even know you're doing it but you're you're just you have to have a little extra spring in your step in order to get over those rocks and again it will it'll force you to lift your knee a little higher because you don't want to fall on your face and that leads to benefit number two uh, explosiveness. All right, so uh, in order to get over those rocks and up the hill, you get a little explosive movements in your ankles, working on that suppleness. We're going to talk more about that in a second, but it's that explosiveness, that little explosiveness that you frankly, mentally, you don't even know you're doing it. Because again, if you don't do it, you're going to fall on your face. So it's that little explosive, just boom, Boom, just to get from one step to the next, one step to the next, uh, to fight the mud, fight the snow, fight the rocks. And um, and I realize some trails are more, um, are more gnarly than others, so you're not always gonna be needing to be as explosive to get up and over the trail. But um, anyway, so that's number two, explosiveness. Number three, suppleness. So the, the ankle area is a runner's best friend if it is healthy and if it is strong, all right? So your ankle has your Achilles tendon, your soleus, your, well, let's just throw in the calf muscle just for fun, even though that's not your ankle, I realize that. But then moving down into your fascia and all of those little ligaments and tendons that go all the way down to your toes for the toe-off. And you hear me talk quite a bit these days about the toe-off. I'm kind of obsessed with it in 2019. I wanna make sure I have a great toe off in the marathon in Cleveland and running the hills and the mountains is forcing me to focus on having a solid uh, toe off because you're usually not landing on your heel when you're running up a mountain. In fact, you don't want to do that. You want to be landing at the very least on your midfoot and preferably up on your toes just a little bit so you can just use the, use the, uh, the torque in your Achilles tendon, being careful, you don't want to pull it, but using the torque that is naturally built into our, our ankles, it's an incredible design, and you're torquing yourself up the mountain with just a nice spring. Boom, 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 right up the mountain, just like a little jackrabbit. And of course, the fourth benefit is the aerobic engine. It goes without saying that going up a mountain, you're going to breathe harder. Like, I'm not going to go into the whole aerobic benefit, but we were breathing pretty solid today. So weren't we fellas, weren't we fellas? So that was good. You're getting a nice solid aerobic stimulus without having to go out and run like a hard 20 miles or a, or not even a hard, but just like a, a steady state 20 mile run. Like it can take it out of you. Today, we got a really solid stimulus by going up that mountain. And very briefly, just wanna mention a few different types of, of hill running. I prefer, number one, long sustained mountain runs, preferably an hour of non-stop uphill. And I won't, like, and I literally mean like not stopping to, like I'll drink water along the way. I just like to get into that mode. And I'm telling you that strength that you're gonna gain, if you can sustain an hour of hill climbing where you're just literally running up a mountain for an hour. And I know there's not always mountains in all parts of the world like that. Uh, but if you do have them, I'm telling you the strength you're going to gain from that, the aerobic strength and just the muscular strength is going to be unmatched, unmatched. Okay. Number two, hill repeats. Not, I'm, I don't do them as much as I probably should. I do think that you can get a huge benefit from hill repeats. I will add them to my training regimen for the Pikes Peak Ascent. Um, I think high school cross country teams can dabble in them, uh, but at the same time, uh, 5Ks in high school cross country are getting very, very fast. So I think you need to be strong for high school cross country, but uh, honestly, more importantly, like to, to perform really, really well, speed. 
you got to be fast. And uh, so it's a balance there. So I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of hill repeats. I think they can play their purpose. Like for marathon training, I think it's more beneficial to keep it, uh, keep it flatter. Uh, not completely flat, but keep it more flat rather than, let's say, doing like a half mile hill repeat. Anyway, that's just my opinion. And the third and last type of hill that I... I wish I could train more on. I, I have to go seek out these these types of hills a little bit, but it's the rolling hills, right? Everyone in the Midwest, I hope you you can have a little bit of access to rolling hills, but just like that nice, solid, dirt farm road that has rolling hills, there's nothing like it for training, honestly, because marathons are the combination of speed and strength. So on a rolling hill, you're gonna, you gotta push it a little bit, but you're gonna get some speed and strength, right? Speed and strength. Whereas today, the run up Mount Morrison, it was really, it was strength. Like there wasn't much, you know, it's just hard to go fast up that thing. So anyway, rolling hills, number three. Okay, two more very creative things for everyone in Florida. And if you live in a very, very flat part of the world, let us know down in the comments. Parking garages. Yes, with permission, with permission, I know cross country teams that will that have access. I don't know how, but they get they gain access. And this was in Florida specifically. They gain access to a parking garage, and they will do hill repeats in the parking garage. How crazy is that? So that's that's one idea. And then of course number two, the treadmill. You got to get on the treadmill, put it on an incline, and just start chugging. Just start chugging. I know it's not the most fun thing to do, but try and do the treadmill. Or number three, if you live by the ocean, find those short, you know, those dunes by the ocean, like 40, 50 feet, running up those sand dunes on the ocean. And now it is a repeat. You know, you're not going to have a two mile long sand dune, but just hop on those dunes, do like, you know, maybe go up 10 times the first time and then go up 20 times the second time and just keep building your strength that way, running up sand on the dunes. I know it's not a perfect situation, but um, it could help you gain some of that hill strength. All right, I hope that made some sense and we could dive more into this topic and guess what? We probably will at some point, but at the very least, I hope I got the wheels turning for you on this topic of how to run faster and how hill work, I believe, can help you run faster and achieve your next PR. So anyway, hill is the keyword and the question of the day. Uh, do you include hill work? And like, I really mean like specific hill work into your training uh, philosophy, your training blocks. Uh, what does it look like? Maybe give an example of a hill workout or a hill run that you love to do in your neck of the woods. You know, maybe you live by some epic mountains. Let us know and that would be amazing. All right, that is it for today. Thanks for being here. Seek beauty, work hard, love each other. Mm, what a day. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thanks for coming out. See you tomorrow.